public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in the court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network, a network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. A public defender's work may take him into any kind of setting, a penthouse, a dingy cold water flat, or, as in tonight's case, the desolate interior of the death house. This is Jimmy Morse. He has fulfilled the prediction of his many critics. He has been convicted of murder and awaits execution in the death house. That was the known whistle. Unless the governor grants a stay of execution, Jimmy has exactly 11 hours to live. You ever visited, Jimmy? Would you like me to wait in here, Father Dunn? That won't be necessary, Haynes. Thank you. Well, the governor's decided, Jimmy. Your reprieve has been refused. I'm sorry. Figured. Well, what do we do now? Get down on our knees and pray? Your heart isn't ready for prayer, son. We'd be wasting our time. That's a new angle. Sky Pilot doesn't want to pray. Later. After we've talked. Talk? About what? Are we going to ask him to forgive me? Are we going to take it like a man? Let him burn me for something I didn't do? Don't, Jimmy. I know what you're going to say. Go through that door, Jimmy. Don't let him see how you feel. It'll all be over in a few seconds. It's just a big mistake. Just forget it. How do you forget it, Father? Get hold of yourself, son. Get out of here! Get out! Jimmy! Get out of here! That better be all, Father. Get him out of here! Look, that's enough out of you. Saddle down. I'll be back to see you this afternoon. Don't bother! I'll see you this afternoon. I don't get it, Father. After all you've done to that kid. No, Hayes. I've failed, Jimmy. Father, do you mind if I gave you a little advice? Of course not. You're knocking yourself out over that kid. He doesn't deserve it. Listen, I've seen a lot of guys come in here. I don't remember one ever admitted he got what he deserved. Some of them even got under my skin. Believe me, it isn't worth it. What is decided? Even the courts are not infallible, Haynes. Still believe he's innocent now. Haynes. Yeah, he's here. The magistrate's office. While they're done speaking. Yes. Well, I'll go there immediately. Thank you, Judge Lambert. Don't say anything to Jimmy, but there still may be a chance to save him. Sorry to keep you waiting, Father. Good to see you again. Hello, Mr. Matthews. Judge Lambert phone? Yes, he authorized me to check on your new evidence. The staff's rather short-handed, but Investigator Copeland volunteered to come in on his day off. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. Name's Sam, Father. I understand your new evidence concerns one of the two witnesses who testified against Jimmy Morse. Yes, the woman, Agnes Fay. Well, Sam just checked the apartment where Ben Regan was murdered. Agnes Fay no longer lives there. I know that. But you can find her before 11, if she's still in the city. She's got to be. We've asked for police help. They're doing everything they can. Father, it might help Sam if you were to brief him on the trial. The trial? Even though Mr. Matthews defended him, Jimmy's record was against him. And those witnesses, and my testimony. Your testimony, Father? Yes. It happened last winter. My parish is in the North River Waterfront District. 
tough neighborhood. Jimmy was raised in North there, learned the code of the streets. At 16, he was sent to reform school, labeled incorrigible. You sponsored his parole? Yes. I've known him since he was a youngster. I've always hoped that his rebellious energies could be turned to some youthful pursuits. And so you persuaded Ben Regan to hire Jimmy in his garage. Uh, yes, Ben did it as a favor to me. He knew that I had great belief in Jimmy. I still have, just as I had on the night that Ben was killed. Well, lucky, sir. <laughs> I got five bucks left. I'll go for a bust. Rack him up. Sure thing, Jimmy. Now, wait a minute, Jimmy. Are you sure you want to do this? Listen, you used to be pretty sharp with the cue, but you've been away a long time. You're out of practice. You afraid I'll get even, Mackey? No, but but you shouldn't even be in this joint. You're out on parole. Hey, ain't you heard, Mackey? Jimmy's got a pie card. What does that crack mean? Nothing, Jimmy. What does it mean, Sid? Well, everybody knows the Padre is fronting for you. Father Dunn's got a lot of drag. He can fix a beef for any kind. I don't ever want to hear you mention his name again to me, Sid, you hear? I didn't mean nothing by it, Jimmy. I told you you shouldn't be in here. Look at your boss. He's blind as a bat. You better beat it. Too late. Hey, Puck, got any change? Yeah, I'll get you some change, Mr. Regan. How much? Make it a ten. What are you doing in here? Just hanging around. Just out of reform school, and you're right back in trouble again. You know you're not supposed to be in here, don't you? This guy's got to go someplace. I'm lonely. I don't know why I let Father Dunn talk me into hiring you. I told him you was no good. You're drunk, Mr. Regan. Drunk, am I? Why, you wise yen again? I'll show you. Here, here, stop it, you two. Jimmy, do as I say. Ben, I'm ashamed of you. Sorry, Father. Well, now, shake hands, the two of you. Go on, shake hands. That's better. Only had a few drinks. A few's enough to make your mouth mean, Ben, and you know it. Maybe you're right. I don't feel so good. You're going home and sleep it off. Jimmy, take him home. Why me? I have a sick call. I haven't the time. Well, let him take a cab. Jimmy, do as I say. He's got all that money from the garage on him, Father. Take him home, Jimmy, and take care of him. Come on. Say, Father, about me being in here. I... Later, son. Hey. See all that dough Ben was carrying? That's what I had to testify to. That Ben was mean drunk, that he and Jimmy had quarreled, and that Ben had the money with him when they left the pool room together. To establish motive, the prosecutor dwelt on the fact that Jimmy had gambled away his money a few minutes before. But what actually convicted the boy was what happened a half hour later. Hey, Aggie, what's wrong with them lights? Talk about cheap. The super shuts off the hot water and the lights at 10 every night. Yeah, thinks all kinds of say. Keep the change. Oh, thanks. Night. Night. Watch out for them steps. Thank you. Agnes Fay found Ben dead. He'd been clubbed with a paperweight and robbed. Suspicion immediately fell on Jimmy. When the police picked him up, he was washing blood from his clothes. There was a nasty gash on his cheek, and he admitted that it was made by Ben's ring. He said that Ben got mean in the cab, hit him in the face, and broke away. And the money? About $500 never found. The prosecutor suggested that Jimmy hit it. Uh, Father, these hallway lights that you mentioned... Uh, that's our new evidence. I asked the superintendent, Mrs. Mulvey, she says she always turns out the lights about 10 o'clock to save money. She says that she remembers Agnes Fay telling her that that night she had tripped in the dark. But Agnes Fay testified that the hallway was fully lighted when she saw the killer. Yes, but I think she turned on that light just before the killer appeared and the glare blinded her. 
That's a possibility. Don't you see? That's why she wouldn't identify Jimmy at first. What about the cab driver? Well, Hoff only saw the killer for a fleeting moment. The prosecutor built his entire case on Agnes Faye's testimony. All other factors were circumstantial. You think there's a chance for a stay of execution, Mr. Matthews? Perhaps. If we find that Agnes Faye made a mistake in her testimony. Jimmy? Yeah? I'm Sam Copeland from the Public Defender's Office. You're wasting your time. I told that guy Matthews everything I know. You guys get me railroaded, now you want to bat the breeze. Not particularly. I'm here to accommodate a friend of yours, Father Dunn. He's hoping you might remember something new. I don't remember nothing. Something we could use to get you a new trial. It's kind of late for that, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, and a waste of my day off, too. What do you mean by a crack like that? I think you're guilty, mister. Well, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, blow your stack. I hear you're handy with your fists, real handy. Why are you? What's the matter, can't stand to hear the truth? Not true, mister. I don't know why nobody believes me. I didn't do it. I didn't kill Ben. Cigarette? Yeah. That's the guard. Guard? Where's the drummer? Need a light. Oh. Thanks, Haynes. Hey, that's a nice lighter. Never saw one before with a St. Christopher's medal on it. It's yours. Makes up for the day off you lost. Huh? The guard keeps it for me. I'm not allowed to have lighters or matches. Take it. It doesn't belong to me anyway. Thanks, but, uh... I won't have any use for it after tonight. Thanks, Jimmy. Be seeing you, kid. Yeah, you bet. Don't give up hope. Maybe I will. call, Father? No. The police should have located that Faye woman by now. If she's still in town. She's got to be. I hope so, Father. Because I believe, like you, that kid's innocent. Well, let's go. When Copeland and Father Dunn left the death house, Jimmy Morse had six hours to live. Copeland set out to find Carl Hoff hoping the cab driver might know where the girl worked. Sam, there's an independent ahead. Wrong license number, Father. It's going to be tough to locate an independent cabbie in this town. It's getting awfully late, Sam. Yeah. Half probably picked up a fare. No telling where he is now. KLQC to car 68. KLQC to car 68. 1016 at Granite Pine. 1016 at Granite Pine. They ordered the prisoner picked up. Over there, Father. Pulling into the cab stand. Twenty-eight Y one five zero. That's Hoff's car. I'll talk to him, Father. You keep your ear on the radio. My call is PDI one. This'll do. Office of Public Defender, Mr. Hoff. What do you want with me? The talk. Sure. I hate to eat alone, huh? How about it? No, thanks. Ah, come on, please, don't be bashful. It's good. Ham and mozzarella. Imported. My wife's Italian. Eh. I'm in a hurry, Mr. Hoff. In less than five hours, Jimmy Morse is going to be executed. I didn't say it's a kid. I only told what I saw. Are you absolutely sure it was Jimmy Morse you saw? 99%. Only 99%? Well, Mr. Nutton in this life is 100% perfect. 
Besides, look, ain't it true? The dame's testimony convicted the kid, not mine. I have reason to believe she might have been mistaken. What are you telling me? Do you know where she lives? Well, don't you live in that apartment anymore, someone? No. Do you have any idea where she might work? Not the foggiest, son. I'm going give her my word. Thanks. Hey, that ain't necessary. I was on my dinner hour. Nothing, huh? Nothing at all. You had a call while you were talking to Hoff. They want you to phone the office. Confidential information. Matthew speaking. Oh, yes, Sam. The police just located Agnes Fay. She's employed at the Skyline Club. I know the place. Thanks. Hello. I'm Agnes. You asked for me. Oh, yes. Please sit down. How nice. I'd like a cigarette and a scotch old-fashioned. The same Christopher on your lighter. I used to wear one of those around my neck. Oh. About the Jimmy Morse case, Miss Fay. The night of the murder, when you entered the hallway, were all of the lights on? What's the difference? Life or death for a boy tonight. Look, don't think I'm not sorry for that kid. But then, Mr. Regan, he was a nice guy. I saw what that kid did to him. What about the light near Regan's door? It was on when the kid bumped into me. I said so at the trial. But you didn't say you had just turned it on. I answered every question they asked. Did they ask you if you had just turned on that light? No. Why did you? There was a tear in the carpet. I caught my foot. And just when the light went on, the killer burst through Regan's door. Yes. You turned, and for a brief instant, the two of you were face to face. Of course, I could feel his breath. But you didn't get a clear look at it. What? You were looking into the light. The glare blinded you. You weren't certain who you saw. That's why you didn't identify Jimmy until halfway through the trial, until after you'd heard all the circumstantial evidence against him. That's not so. Isn't it, Agnes? I... You got me all confused. Then you're not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure of anything anymore. Agnes. Will you wait here for a call from me? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Agnes. Oh, bartender, scotch old-fashioned for the lady. Thank you, Agnes. Well? We've got a chance, Father, if we can persuade the DA to phone the governor and ask for a stay of execution. Look, Bob, the girl had been looking into a bright light. The glare must have affected her eyes. I'm sure if you give her another chance, she'll change her testimony. It was her identification that convicted the boy, Mr. Talmadge. You're forgetting about the gash in the boy's cheek and the other evidence. Circumstantial. So the public defender argued, but the jury disagreed. No, I'm sorry. I can't phone the governor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have guests. What if there's a shadow of a doubt? I don't believe there is a shadow of a doubt, Father. Your theory about the light is interesting, but highly speculative. Speculative? Oh, good evening, Father. Good evening. Hello, Sam. How is he, Haynes? Scared. Will he see me? He asked to, in the chapel. The warden's with him now, Father. I'll bring him in in a few minutes. Thank you. You know, they all show what they're made of when the time nears. Get so you can predict how they're going to take it. This kid surprised me. You'll make it okay? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's something at least. Yeah. Father. If you don't mind taking a cab home, I, I think I'll go. Well, certainly, Sam. Uh, may I see this? Where'd you get it? Jimmy, why? Belonged to Ben Reagan. How do you know? St. Christopher Medal. Had it put on there myself. It was a door prize at a church supper. Ben won it. Father, this might be just what we've been looking for. Matthew. 
Matthew speaking. Oh, yes, Sam. Oh, Bart, did the police find anything of Regan's on Jimmy when they picked him up? Nothing. I stressed that at the trial. Why? Well, the kid gave me a lighter. Now, Father Dunn says it's Regan's. Now, look, the kid didn't have it on him when he was picked up. He must have gotten it after he was jailed. You mean someone gave it to him? Well, I don't know, but... Well, he was allowed visitors at the trial. Question him, Sam. Right. I've got to talk to Jimmy right away. Look, you can't go in there now, Sam. But you heard on the phone what... Yeah, I heard, but what difference will it make? That's what I've got to find out. Look, you can't go in there. The warden and the doctor are there now. The kid's having a physical. A physical? Now? Yeah, it's the law. Look, relax, Sam. Sit down. I'll see what I can do. I'll let you know when we bring the kid through here on the way to the chapel. Public Defender's Office. I'm gonna get right to the point. The night Ben Regan was murdered, one of you followed him and Jimmy Morris out of here. You went to Regan's apartment and waited. When he came in alone, you killed and robbed him. Now, I wanna know who. Well, if it takes longer than 10 seconds for an answer, I'm gonna have to book all three of you. All right, if that's the way you feel about it, I can get a policeman. Wait. Shut up, Sid, please. I said shut up, Sid. If I get in trouble with the cops again, my old man will kill me. Honest, mister, it wasn't me or Sid. Why, you stupid... Hold it, Sid. I don't want to get Artie into trouble. I got nothing to hide. No? You uh, shouldn't be so careless with your murder souvenirs, Mackie. I never saw that before in my life. Well, here. Take a better look. You went to visit Jimmy in the city jail during the trial. That dropped out of your pocket while you were sitting in the bunk. You can't prove that. We'll see when we get to headquarters, Mackie. Yeah. You're going to tell that to the warden if I have to wring every word of it out of you. All right. All right. Okay. Father, Sam Copeland has just cleared Jimmy. Got a confession out of some kid named Mackie. Warden is calling the governor now. That was as close a call as we've ever had. Jimmy was returned to parole thanks to the faith and hard work of Father Dunn and Sam Copeland, and is now well on his way to fill a useful place in our society. Fred Mackey was convicted of the murder of Ben Regan and ultimately paid the supreme penalty. The case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender. Public defender Irwin I. Krug Wyndham County, Willimante, Connecticut, and his staff for outstanding achievement in the cause of justice.